Welcome back everybody, Joe here with 360 Comics and today we're going to be posing the question, what type of comic book collector are you? We're going to be going over the four main types of comic book collectors. We're going to go into detail with all four of them, including how they fit in with the community and you know what their role is in the hobby, um, as well as giving some examples about some things that they might be picking up as part of their collecting on a regular basis. Before we get started, I just want to let you guys know, as of the time of this recording, we are 10 subscribers away from our 300 subscriber giveaway. So if you haven't entered that yet, I would do it now if you'd like to. All you have to do, subscribe and then comment on my videos. For every video that you comment on, you get an entry into the giveaway to win a first printing of Nice House on the Lake number one and number two. I will very likely be picking um, a winner this week, so definitely don't miss out on that. And follow me on Instagram and stick around to the end of the video and I'll be talking about some future giveaways that I'm doing. The first thing you need to know about the four different types of comic book collectors is that very few people only fall into one category. The vast majority of people involved in the hobby are a mixture of two, three, or even all four of the different types put together. Personally, I find myself falling into all four categories, and I've got some books here to show you today that shows my connection to each type. First up, we have the pure collector. This is someone who buys comic books for the love of the hobby, collecting them, and often displays them in their house, um, you know, up on the walls, around the house, or in a specific room dedicated to their comic book collection. These usually are not people that um, sell their comic books or try to profit off them at any point, unless they really need the money or they're getting out of the hobby. A lot of these people have a very specific list of things that they enjoy buying and collecting and will often hold it for their entire life and pass it down to their kids. This right here is one of my collector books. I will never get rid of this comic book and I will likely pass it down to my kids, grandkids, something like that. Um, this was the first book I think I ever got, uh, first book I certainly ever remember getting. Um, my dad's friend gave it to me for my birthday one year, and I have held on to it and taken care of it all these years. Um, not a particularly expensive book, but something that means a lot to me. Here's another personal collection book of mine. We've got Witches Number 1 by two of my favorite comic creators of all time, Scott Snyder and Jock. This is my absolute favorite indie book ever, and I will likely never get rid of it. It's a 9-8 of number one, signed by both the artist and the writer. Uh, just not something I really see myself getting rid of. It means a lot to me. Next up is the investor. An investor is going to be buying comic books to hold for a long period of time in the hopes that they generally rise in price over the years as more people get into the hobby and as older books become more and more scarce. And they try to eventually sell their um, collection for profit. And um, typically, this kind of collector is going to target key issues as well as older books as opposed to stuff that's coming out currently or stuff that's only a couple years old um, and you know they're really going to pretty much stay away from filler issues unless they have some sort of iconic cover or rarity to them. Here we got X-Men 58, the first appearance of Havoc, and this is one of my investment books. I tend to buy Silver Age key issues uh, in all sorts of conditions and grades. Um, this one's pretty beat up, but I got it for a really good deal, and I think you know, long term uh, it could go up in value. Uh, remember that nothing I'm saying here today is investment advice, and you should make your own decisions with your money and not listen to me about anything. As you may have noticed with the collectors as well, uh, the investors are sometimes going to be keeping raw books and other times going to be slabbing up their books. Uh, just like this, I have slabbed here a Daredevil number two, the second appearance of both Electro and Daredevil. And this is a long-term investment book for me, one that I'm going to keep around for a long time because it's a Silver Age key. And, uh, you know, I have it in kind of an entry-level low grade here, and maybe I'll upgrade it someday, um, but low grade is better than no grade in my eyes. 
Next up is the speculator. And uh, what a speculator does is take a usually a lower buy in investment, um, but a higher risk investment, meaning that their initial buy in, you know, the book might not be expensive at the time or might not be, you know, super expensive like, you know, the Silver Age key, but it has the potential to possibly go up a lot in money. Now, most of the speculation recently has been based solely upon what's coming out in television and movies, especially with the MCU. Speculation is risky because if your prediction doesn't pan out, uh, you can often lose money in the situation, especially if you bought while the book was being hyped up as a possible speculation. It's pretty hard to get in before the rest of the community does, but if you end up with a nice one, you can make a big score. Some speculators do so by buying new books right off the shelf for cover price as they come out. And that's what I did with this book right here, Nightwing 81. Uh, this is in the Tom Taylor run of Nightwing that's really popular right now. And this is the first appearance as well as the first cover appearance of a new villain named Heartless. I really, really like this character and I see a lot of potential in him. And I think that, you know, picking this up for $4 could end up being profitable in the long run. It is selling for a little bit more than that, maybe the 10 to $12 area online already, but I'm looking for, you know, a larger flip in the future if this character becomes much bigger than he is now. Other speculators will focus on older characters that might be not the most popular ones um, that they see potential in, usually, again, coming to the MCU or the DCEU. Right here, I have a first appearance of Omega Red in X-Men number four from the second volume from the 90s. Uh, this is a character a lot of people were specking on this past year as making his way into the MCU. I know I heard a lot of buzz around possibly him showing up in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Obviously, that didn't happen, um, but maybe we'll see Omega Red in the future. As a 90s kid, I would definitely love to see his big screen debut. Last up on our list is The Reader. And the one thing that really sets the reader apart from the other three types of comic collectors that we spoke about today is that they will never have a book slabbed and graded. Reason being... Once a book is encased in plastic, you can't read it anymore. And if you want to, you have to crack it out of there, and that's a waste of money and a bunch of nonsense. So readers won't have slabbed books. A lot of readers are, you know, weekly comic book store customers that will go in week after week and buy the titles that they're currently reading. Uh, but some also go for back issues, um, specifically looking for the, the cheaper runs that they can get for a low cost that still have good storylines in them. You may have heard the term reader copy before, and this refers to a book that is not in good condition and is also not slabbed up. Uh, this is just a copy of a book that is great for reading. It's complete. It has the whole story, but it's not necessarily in the nicest shape, but it still works for reading and entertainment. Uh, this is a good example of a reader copy of a really cheap book here. We got Marvel Presents 21, uh, which is a Cyclops story. I actually like most of the Marvel Presents stuff, and it's very affordable. Great reader run to um, to hop on if you're into that. Uh, but again, worthless. I don't even have this thing bagged and boarded. I just threw it behind me. And uh, the bidding on that book will start at $500. Uh, you can uh, message me if you'd like it. You'll also see readers pick up uh, compendiums, compilations, trade paperbacks, omnibus. There's a whole lot of names for, um, you know, different compilations of uh, comics put together and, and graphic novels. Um, we've got Batman Year One here. This is all four books in the Batman Year One uh, run by Frank Miller. And this is a hard copy, uh, a little bit more durable. And right here we've got a paperback copy, a trade paperback of, um, you know, the Flashpoint run, really popular uh, run by Jeff Johns. And if you haven't seen the Flashpoint Paradox, it is honestly my favorite DC movie ever. Um, certainly my favorite animated one and probably honestly better than all the live action ones. Get on that. 
taking those four types of comic book collectors and kind of figuring out where you want to be and where you see yourself fitting into the community is really important in focusing your collection on what you want to collect and what you want to purchase. No one out there, well, let's say the vast majority of people out there do not have the money to buy everything and, you know, do everything as far as comic collecting goes. Um, but if you focus on specific areas um, and specific things, it can help you, you know, budget a little bit better and pick out the things that really mean a lot to you. I hope you learned something today and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment below and let me know how I did. And uh, of course, follow me on Instagram. I will be announcing two giveaways coming up. One I'm going to do for Instagram for 3000 followers. I think I'm at 2,450 right now. So once I hit 2,500, I'll probably announce that. Haven't decided what it's going to be yet, but I'm also going to be doing a YouTube giveaway where I give away all 53 books that came out on free comic book day this year. If you weren't able to make it out, um, please look out for that video. Currently, I'm reading all of them. I'm going to do a review video, and in that video, I'm going to tell you how you have a chance to win all 53 of those books. So uh, stick around, and until next time, turn the page, wash your hands.